Attorney Liz, we can get started. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is Liz Kukla. I'm the Secretary of the Board of Zoning Appeals. I'm going to read the preamble for you this morning on October 4th, 2021. In compliance with notification requirements of the city's open meeting law in section 101.021 of the codified ordinances of the Cleveland, Ohio, 1976, notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. Abstentions from any vote due to conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meeting have the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and, act and activated by clicking the hand icon. Please wait for the chair or facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select unmute and announce yourself before you speak. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Call in users can unmute by using star six. All meeting activity is being recorded via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube for public view. We have provided a link to the meeting for those who wish to speak on a particular case via our website and email. All requests to speak on a particular matter have been considered. We have also received emails from those who have provided written comment on a particular matter. Next slide, Maurice. Hey, go ahead, come um, roll it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Barnes? Ms. Barnes here. Ms. Brown. Present. Ms. Bate? Present. Ms. Britt. Here. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Wonderful. And Madam Chair, here is the first postponement, and I believe the only postponement that we have on the agenda this morning, and that is calendar number 21-143 regarding 1041 Auburn Avenue. The uh, owner proposed to erect a three to four story single family residence with attached garage in a B12 family residential district. The appellant needs an additional postponement. I believe this would be the second postponement to allow time to continue to work with the community uh, regarding the review of the project. And um, he needs time also in order to allow for time for the ownership of the property to be. Uh, changed and so he would need the dates sometime in uh, December of this year and so we're thinking I'm thinking maybe the 13th the 20th of course we don't have anything on the agenda yet give them the 13th and uh I'll grant it since he doesn't have the ownership uh situation worked out yet um so that's fine okay thank you I believe that's all that we have this morning, Maurice. You can go to the next slide. Ready to rock okay. and roll. Yeah. Okay. I don't, see any, I don't see any council people, so go ahead, Ms. Faith. I don't I don't either. So here we go. Maybe we're gonna have a straight straight shot through <clears throat> the agenda today. Uh, so we'll begin with calendar number 21 151. This is at 7615 Lawn Avenue. The City of Cleveland Land Revitalization Program owner and the Detroit Sherway Homes LP prospective purchaser proposed to erect a five foot by six foot womanized wooden landing and ramp attached to a proposed one story frame single family residence. The ramp will be 25 feet long and extend to the front yard sidewalk. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there are two and number two states that the city planning design review approval is required for this. 
And uh, I believe, Ms. Brown, you're going to take on the uh, swearing in today. Is that true? Yes, I will. Uh, right. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'll turn it over to you. All right. So I am swearing in all who are present for this case. Um, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? If you do, please raise your hand and say, I do, then state your name and your address. I is do. Here? Yes, I do. Um, Katie Gillette with City Architecture, 12205 Archmere Boulevard. Okay, anyone else? Thank you, Katie, you are sworn in. Thank you. Thank you. History of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been no change in the zoning since 1929. <clears throat> in our records administrative office, I found that in 19, sorry, 1894, a permit was issued to erect a barn on this property. In 1926, a permit was issued to erect an addition to the house on the site. And then in 1929, a permit was issued to erect a deck and porch. There are no variances on file for this address and nothing of note in the recent history in our cell system. And Madam Chair, I would also like to at this time state that we do have an authorization letter from the city of Cleveland, allowing the applicant to uh, act on their behalf today. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> not sure if we needed what happened in 1849, but thanks, Liz. <laughs> I thought it was very interesting. Thank you. Uh, legal standard, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting an area variance from the side yard requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Go ahead, Katie. All right, um, good morning. Um, thank you for your time this morning. I'm Katie Gillette with City Architecture, um, and we are working with CHN Housing Partners um, to develop 30 new single family homes in the Detroit Shoreway neighborhood. Um, and this is part of a lease purchase model. Um, it's a 15 year pathway to home ownership for low income families, um, and it's primarily funded through tax credits um, from the Ohio Housing Finance Agency. Um, for the site selection of these 30 homes, we worked very closely with um, the with uh, city planning, um, Adam, Adam Davenport in particular, um, as well as community development to find um, 30 vacant lots to develop these new single family homes. Um, and some of the factors that went into the selection included um, transit. Um, we were very cognizant of existing trees and trying to preserve as many trees on the, the properties um, as possible. Um, and as I will describe in a little bit, uh, constructing some of the homes proves a little bit um, challenging. The program of the 30 homes includes 28 two story homes and two um, single story accessible homes. They're all uh, three bedrooms. Um, next slide, please. Um, and th this slide shows some examples um, of previously previous homes that CHN has constructed throughout the city of Cleveland. Um, they've been uh, doing the these infill single family homes for many years right now, they are very well regarded um, for their work uh, throughout the state um, in, in building these homes. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the property in question is at 7615 Lawn Avenue. It's between West 76 and West 80th Street. Um, it's highlighted on the map here. Next slide, please. And here is um, the, uh, the view from Lawn Avenue uh, of the property. Um, we were actually on this green space here that this, these are two lots. We are gonna be constructing a two story home on the left side and the single story accessible home um, on the right side. Next slide, please. Um, and the variance that we are seeking this morning um, is regarding the interior side yard. Um, the zoning code calls for a three foot uh, setback. Um, so this slide shows what is required. Next slide, please. And this is um, the encroachment that we are seeking um, approval for. Uh, and then next slide. 
And so this site plan um, explains how we plan to develop these two properties. Um, again, we're seeking uh, the variance for the property on the, the west side. Um, the home itself will has been laid out to avoid any other variances. Um, so the house itself will you know, have five foot setbacks from either um, interior side yard. Uh, it will have an attached garage, which will be um, access from the rear alley. Now the site itself actually has a two foot grade difference from um, the front to the back of the site. Um, and because of that, and because of our um, desire and requirement to make this home fully accessible, we do need to um, construct a ramp. And we had looked at various options to construct a ramp. Um, we looked at, you know, uh, an option to avoid zoning variances, which would essentially require a ramp along in the entire front yard. Um, aesthetically, it would really, you know, be, uh, would really detract from the house. So this option here um, to construct the side yard, uh, the ramp on the interior side yard proved to be the most um, optimal uh, solution for our team and that is the uh, variance we're seeking this morning as i mentioned we have worked very closely with city planning and we also have support from the local um northwest neighborhood cdc and with that i will open it to any questions thank you this is pretty simple um do we have anyone from city planning or is it maurice just me <laughs> okay maurice go ahead yeah, we support the variances as uh, Mr. Lett stated, the, uh, the city planning commission, specifically Adam Davenport, <clears throat> has worked closely with them uh, coming up with this site plan and this project, so we are in full support. Thank you. Uh, board, um, any questions, uh, motions? Uh, Madam Chair, no questions. I think this is uh, an extensive project that has been, you know, uh, well thought through through its many iterations. Uh, and this is just a ramp so that it can be ADA accessible. So I move that we go ahead and approve uh, calendar number 21 151. I have a second. This is Member Brown. I second. Member Brown, second. Go ahead, call the roll, please, Ms. Cooper. Ms. Barnes. Yes. Ms. Brown. Yes. Ms. Bay. Yes. Ms. Britt. Yes. Calendar 21-151 is granted to be ratified next week and we will send you a letter. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving right along. Calendar number 21-120. This is at 2280 West 6th Street. Aaron Price, owner, proposes to erect a four-story single, a four-story frame single family residence with attached garage in a B1 two family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there are four, the fourth one being that city planning approval is required prior to issuance of the building permit. And the first postponement of this case, which was on September 13th, was made at the request of the councilman to allow for community review. I will turn it over to you, Ms. Brown. I am swearing in all who are present for this case. Uh, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, state I do, your name and your address. I do. My name is Mark Verdova and uh, my address is 459 Dunwoody Drive in Aurora, Ohio. You are sworn in, Mark. Anyone else? I do, Donna Gregonis, um, Neighborhood Development Director for Tremont and Ohio City CDC, 3308 Lorraine Avenue is our office. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. You are sworn in. <coughs> I believe that's everyone for this case. Okay, thank you. History of the property, please. I do. I can't. Oh, we have another one. I think oh. someone else is trying to say something, but it's all broken up. Oh, would you be able to raise your hand, say your name, and state your address? 
We do not hear you. Are you on mute? We see you. Okay. Go ahead. I do. I do. 1026 Auburn. Can you say Patricia your name, please? Boysonette. Patricia Boysonette. Be like in Victor O I S I N E T. Thank you. I heard you. You're sworn in, Ms. Boysonette. Okay, okay, Liz. Thank you, Madam Chair. This property was originally zoned to general retail in, in 1926. It was changed to the current two family residential district in uh, 1963. In our uh, records room, we found that in 1970, a permit was issued for corrections to a three family dwelling. 1977, a permit was issued to demolish a multifamily dwelling on site. There are no variances on file for this address. And in the more recent history in our Acela system, we found that between the years of 2005 and 2010, there were vacant lot cleanup payments assessed to the property. And that's all that I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Legal standard, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting area variances from the garage placement, maximum gross floor area, and side yard requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. So who's going to be the spokesperson for this case? Uh, I will, please. My, my name is Mark Verdova. <clears throat> I appreciate you all uh, having me and uh, giving us a, a platform to hear to be able to discuss the project. I am kind of a last second substitution. Our architect, Mike Cato, uh, is out of town. So forgive me as the uh, backup quarterback here. I might fumble a little bit. So please help me walk through this. But, uh, you know, long story short, uh, Aaron Price would like to build a a new home uh, on this property. And, uh, you know, to your point, um, you know, we are of the understanding that we're not allowed to have a front load garage. Um, we don't have any rear alley access. And, uh, and our client did not want to have a detached garage for, you know, pretty obvious reasons in our climate here. So um, the first uh, variance that we were looking to accomplish was the side yard setback so that we'd have enough room uh, to have a, a driveway and uh and to have access to be able to get into the garage safely and practically um so that I, that i think was the first one to address and then uh you know in general the setback as well um based on the size of the lot you know to get to a 50 foot setback wouldn't fit so we were uh politely requesting a i think what's about a 30 foot setback and then the uh the lot lot coverage as was stated uh the house plan is i believe 2000 Looking at my notes here, 2,645 uh, square feet. So not a uh, not a large home, but larger than I believe what the uh, the standard is. And then the only other thing that I would add, because I know uh, that Ms. Gregonis is on the call, um, they've been really uh, cooperative with us to help accommodate us uh, to go through the block club and also the economic development. And so there's been a bunch of emails swirling around. We are not final approved by either of those. Um, but some emails came out saying that we could have this meeting and then we do plan on uh, earning, hopefully earning uh, an approval from both of those boards this week before ratification of our project would be done. So, again, I don't know if I'm sharing information I shouldn't, uh, but my understanding is that we're going through these steps and uh, we're hoping to seek your approval today. Uh, we're hoping to uh, earn the approval from both the economic development and the block club this week uh, and then hopefully have a more formal thumbs up from everyone next week. Uh, so that, that's everything that I know, and uh, I guess I would maybe turn it back over to the board and ask uh, what, if anything else, I should be sharing. Uh, yeah, Mark, just I have a question. Um, it doesn't look like it's a super large home, so the, uh, ex the excessive square footage, is that because the basement is active or attic is active or... This is where I'm probably stumbling a bit. I thought I saw somewhere on a letter that like you were supposed to have like a, a certain percentage of the size of the lot for coverage and, and it was only like 1600 feet or something. So we're, we're over that. Uh, okay. 
Okay, I was just asking. No. Yeah, no, great question. Oh, hopefully I answered it right. No need to sweat about that one. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what? The client and Mike Cato are both going to kill me if I mess this up this morning. So <laughs> more nervous than normal. I don't want to be the one that comes off the call and they go, you guys blew it. Okay, well, this is recorded. So if you come up missing, <laughs> we'll have some suspects. So, okay. All good. Um, uh, Donna, you want to go, go ahead and chime in? Hi, good morning, uh, Madam Chair and members of the commission. Thank you again for allowing us to speak. Um, so, Mr. Verdova is correct. They have been working really closely with us. Um, so, tonight actually is the block club meeting and then Thursday's economic development committee meeting. And um, I know we don't like to push any of these projects, but um, the only variance that we think might be a concern and, and would likely will be for the community and the economic development committee of Tremont will be the two, two foot side yard. Um, that will likely be a problem because um, the city has, they would probably be opposed to it because the city has created a standard that three feet is the normal um, and two feet might be a little much. Um, so just wanted to request a specific postponement for that issue um, for final review, because I know that they might want to move it um, to three feet instead. So I hope you could take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Um, Maurice, uh, City. Um, I, I think I would agree with that. You know how I feel about these three foot uh, or variances less for less than three feet um, on the side yards. I would like to see the three feet. Uh, Mark, do you know why there's absolutely no more room? Uh, you're, so, first of all, you're doing a shared driveway arrangement here, correct? Yes, that's the idea for uh, what would be another home on the other lot. And so without that, if you do the math, the driveway, I believe, gets to be about eight feet, um, which is just just tight, you know, and then you're a little bit tighter as well to be able to drive in and turn and get into the garage. So a lot of this is is birthed by the, the garage. If, if it were a front entry garage allowed, this certainly wouldn't be an issue. Um, or if we had access from the back, wouldn't be an issue, um, but but no, neither of those are there. So that's what has kind of guided us down this path. And, uh, you know, so yeah, we're, we're hoping to, to get a variance of another foot uh, to the side. I guess one more question, looking at these at the drawing here, um, it looks like the rear part of the house, which is again, where the garage is, mm -hmm. is closer to the property line. So is that the two foot section? And what is, if so, what do you know what the distance is in the front part of the house? Because it's not dimensioned, so I'm just curious. Yeah, that, that's okay. Let me, uh, let me flip to another screen here. So we, uh, the front of the building of the home is, right now about 12 feet off the uh off the front line and then the beginning of where the garage is would be i believe that that's closer to or i'm sorry hang on one second here no i'm looking i'm looking for the Precious side yards the side not yard. not the front yard yeah the the side yard is the setback we're talking about then to the far side to the right side or to the left side that we're asking oh, okay, gotcha. two feet i'm sorry but so then how far is the front portion of the house from the property line on the right side there. Uh, so uh, from, the, from the front the property front line, it's 12 feet. You're asking You're from asking the right the side property line? line? From the, from the, from the oh, hold on a minute. Let me see if I can uh, annotate this so you can. Uh, <laughs> Thank what, you. So you can see what's going on here. Um, uh, so I'm asking so for I'm what asking this, for, I don't know. Can you see the red dot? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I'm looking for that dimension, for that dimension and I, I'm assuming I, I, this is the two feet, and I'm wondering what this is. Yeah, I don't yeah, have I that don't labeled. Have I can labeled. look that up, but I would I would say with confidence, with confidence that's at least three feet. So this is three, and this, the rear portion where the garage is is two. Yeah, so only for yes, part of the building are we looking to have a B2. And again, I could find out for sure and document that, but uh, it's at least three. It's certainly at least a foot more that way, even without having it scaled. Um, so we're compliant for the majority of the dwelling, just the garage portion. I'm trying to get a uh, accommodation. And I apologize if there's yeah. an echo. There is on my end. Hopefully, that's not too annoying for you guys. Yeah. Um, 
This is a tough one. I, I'm not sure how I come down on this, actually, uh, you know, because we are very much in favor of having the side-loaded garage as opposed to a front-loaded garage. Um, so you're, we commend you for doing that. We also commend you for uh, doing a shared driveway arrangement, you know, the, we're minimizing the number of curb cuts in the property, the project. So there are some, you know, positive things going on here. And, and you're right, it's unfortunate you don't have the rear alley access. Um, to, a, I mean, that would be best case scenario, obviously, especially down in that area. Um, I, I, so I'm really just restating the issues here. I think I would leave it up to the board as to what, what you, what, or the local community um, to make a decision on whether you support the two feet in the back or not. I have a question. Sure. Go ahead, Mr. Brown. Chair, may I ask my question? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Um, my question has to do with maintenance of that section of the property. And will it also be four story? And how would someone access it in the future? Good questions. <laughs> And the maintenance is always the issue always that we issue. always are concerned with when you're going less than the three foot uh, side yard because it makes it harder to get in there. Now, of course, we have a vacant lot next door and it is towards the, the rear portion of the lot that you have the two foot encroachment. Um, yeah, and it's, the, and it's the garage and not actually the house. So well, is, it, is it also, are you building on top of the garage or is it, what is the height of the garage? Uh, so, again, this is one of the things I didn't have all this list ready, so bear with me, but we are building over the top of it. So the building itself is four stories and we are building over it. The garage is not necessarily just a one story. Yeah. We do have a letter of support from the neighbor allowing us to use and access their lot. Um, and then obviously our client owns the other lot. So in terms of building, accessing the lot, maintenance of the lot, we've got people on either side that are in agreement to work together. I'm Madam Chair. I believe that somebody is unmuted. So we're having that echo issue. Yeah, yes. I believe it's yeah. your question that we haven't called on yet. So, uh, Maurice, can you mute her until we get to her, please? Sure. There we go. Um, I will say to uh, Ms. Brown that I think this, this drawing here kind of shows you that, uh, you know, where the garage is and that it is, por a portion of it is not the full four stories. That's pretty tall. Um, the question then is the lot next door is currently vacant, I think, according to the site plan. And Mr. Verdova is saying that the owner is giving you access. Um, is it an easement? Because that would make all the difference. So what it was, was a letter of support. When we started in talking with uh, the block club, it was a matter of, hey, are we gonna have access on that other site? It's very tight. And so, uh, you know, my uh, project manager, Justin Music had reached out to the neighbor of the vacant lot, let's say to the right of us, if you're standing at the street um, to discuss uh, you know, collaboration and that he was in support of the project and support of where we were setting our house and didn't have any problem as the immediate next door neighbor. But there isn't like a, it, it's not like we granted or extended our lot into his or something. It was just a matter of documented support of the project and not having a problem as the neighbor most impacted, frankly, uh, right? As the next door neighbor <laughs> um, having support from them. So that was, uh, that was our intent. Well, this okay. visual of the adjacent lot is very helpful because it looks like well, I can't tell, especially in this neighborhood, but would it be a buildable lot in the future? That that really is the question. If it's not gonna be buildable, I have no objection, but do we know? Yeah, we don't know. Ms. Brown, uh, build non-buildable lots don't exist anymore <laughs> in the city. People, <laughs> That's why people, people I, come I, with all kinds of projects. 
uh, to to build on 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 these lots. Um, I, I I get the hardship here because it is you're you're in a in a weird position where you don't have you know as Marie said you don't have the rear access to you know put the garage there. Um, we don't allow the front loaded. I mean, you would have to come to us if you did want to do front loaded anyway. So you're kind of in a catch twenty two here with that situation. Um, as well as the, you know, the lot is vacant for now. And unfortunately, if someone, you know, builds on that, they're probably going to have to come to us or have to move the house. But, you know, that's just something, you know, that we dealt with before um, with, with these. So it's not a super uncommon situation, you know, and I just, I feel like that the applicant has tried to meet everything that they've tried to meet on this. Um, and it just seems like that this one portion of the lot, you know, is at two feet instead of three. So that's just my 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 spiel on it. Um, and I'm gonna go Chair, to yes. I did bring up the drawing here, and you can see. Let me get back to it. If I zoom in, you can see that the front portion of the house is in fact because here's an extra foot, right? Uh, let me put on the. Mm -hmm. They're they're calling out a foot right here, so that would mean that this the front portion of the house is the th does meet the three feet, and it right. is this portion which the is garage the garage, part. and the yeah. of course the upper levels as well. So that's that's the situation. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna call on Miss Voicenet um, for this case, and then we can uh, deliberate further. Miss Voicenet, you have a comment. Up, oh, you're muted, ma'am. Still muted. There you go. Someone talking, I can't hear. I don't see. Is Miss Voicenet still on? I don't see. Yeah, her. I don't see. I don't even. I don't even see her I name. I think she's under. She's under Earl now. I oh, think. okay. Okay. No. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. This, who is this? I don't. This is Patricia Voicenet, and I'm using my son son stuff, but I don't believe in the uh, um. The amount, the distance between the building and, and the adjacent lot. I don't care if those people approved it or not. It's not enough space. What if there's a fire? How are you going to get to that house? And I don't believe it should be four stories high. It doesn't comply with the rest of that neighborhood. And ma'am, what was your address? 1026 Auburn. And how, how far away is that from this house? Three About three houses. Okay. And it's not that I was in a similar situation. Uh, we won't talk about that, but no, I don't believe it's enough. I mean, the rest, I don't care what, what they take from the street to there. Why can't they just put it in the footprint? There is there. There's a footprint there. So why can't they just build there? Ma'am, do you realize this is that this is a house on West Sixth Street? Yeah, I, I was thinking. I think you're confused that this house. is the house on Auburn. This is not on Auburn. Okay, okay I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Auburn <laughs> house has been postponed until December. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Bye. All right. All right. That, Thanks, That's why I, I was I, thinking. I, the same, yeah, I was thinking the same thing, but I was like, I don't want to get. Yeah, okay. I wasn't. I wasn't one hundred percent sure where Auburn was in relation to West Six. That's why I brought up the map. But okay. Yeah, yeah I live there too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, or any other questions? Um, I. My question was, and and Maurice uh, pulled up the plan view so we could look at those dimensions, and uh, the garage being the only portion of the structure that is uh, falling in the t the two feet from the lot line. So, um, I I realize that um, it still has to. 
be approved by um, the two CVC uh, uh, groups. Um, but in looking at this, can we go back to the uh, elevation rendering, Maurice? Absolutely. Just so we can look at the height, because it looks like the top story. Um, it's age back, probably. So yeah, the this, top this story. This view here. The yeah, top story is would... step back. Yeah. And um, and to mark what exactly is going to be going on, it looks like it looks like most of the top story is deck area. Is that correct? Sorry, I had to unmute. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So, what is the portion of the top story that is enclosed and has uh, glazing? I'm going to reference the floor plans here too, so that I can see it with you. So. Um, we have you come up a stair tower to a hallway and then up there is an office for Mr. Price, like a work area. Okay. Uh, so loft area and then you go outside to, uh, to what is the terrace to the terrace. Okay. The, so the it's other, just, oh, it's sorry. not, it's, it's only going to be an office area. It's not bedroom or anything like that. So no, it's not. And it's more of like a, a more of like a pocket office. You know, it's not like right. a grand, you know, uh, like corner office type thing. It's more of just kind of a little little nook, so to speak. And, you know, one other thing to uh, uh, everybody that may be looking at the plans, if you look too, I, I would think um, if I were on the other side of the argument, I'd say, well, how big's the garage? You know, can't you just shrink the garage a foot, and move yeah. it over, right? Aside from the driveway. Um, but if you look at the dimensions of the garage, it's, it's a pretty minimal garage. Uh, as a custom home builder, I mean, we typically will do garages that are you know, I shouldn't say typical. Oftentimes we'll do garages that are 22, 24, 26 feet deep. If you look at our interior dimension there, it's at 19. So, you know, luckily Mr. Price doesn't drive a big truck, uh, you know, with a right. plow or something on the front or he wouldn't even be able to fit. Um, but, uh, but you know, we're, we're pretty tight there. I mean, I, I wouldn't, in a professional opinion as a custom home builder, I wouldn't make the garage any more efficient than that if it was on any size lot. So we don't have, I can't just kick it in a foot. If someone said, why don't you just push in the wall on the right, line it up with the rest of the house. We're tight there, so you're you're talking about you know I don't have those I don't have the room. Otherwise, I promise we would. Um, but the garage to get it to really a minimal size, and then to have the functionality, so Mr. Price doesn't have to turn and pull out like you know Austin Powers doing a five point turn to get out of his garage. We need to have enough room for him to be able to pull out and pull down. You know, maybe a two point turn at least um, to so, get out of there. So, Mark, the, the garage is 19 by what? What is, what's the other dimension? I can't read. 24. 24. Or no, 23. 23. 23. Okay. So two car right, garage. So, 19 is the, is the dimension <laughs> right. to this group. Yeah. So, um, so that's, that's a smaller than typical garage. So I think you've shrunk that down. Um, as you say, uh, I mean, it typically they're 22 by 24. Yes, ma'am. And so you've you've shrunk that to about as small as you can get it. Um, would you be willing to upgrade the fire rating on the wall on the is that the, the east wall of the garage then? Sorry, can you define what exactly that means when you say upgrade the well, fire you, rating? Well you you probably you've probably got a one hour fire rating on that wall on the east side of the garage. Can you upgrade that to a three hour? Yeah. I, I don't see that okay. being an issue at all. All right. It, I, I think if you make that modification, that will um, uh, take care of concerns about, you know, any, uh, any, uh, any house that might exist next door in the future to that side. Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, that, cause that would retard, that would retard any fire that might move. Uh, from your structure. So, uh, Madam Chair, I think, um, I think, you know, going over this, um, you pointed out that they have tried to fulfill every other requirement. I mean, we don't, we don't do front loading. We, they don't have uh, alley access. He shrunk the garage as small really as you can get a two car garage. And the, the fourth floor is probably what bumped up their square footage. Um, and that's just going to be, uh, as he said, a pocket, sort of a loft office. So um, I would be comfortable with uh, making a motion to go ahead 
and approve 21-120. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second, Ms. Barnes. Go ahead, call the roll, please. And Madam Chair, are we putting the condition on this motion that they would provide a three hour firewall? Uh, he agreed. Uh, I don't think we can, but we, you you can you can note that the uh, the appellant has agreed to do that, but we can, we can't make it a condition. Right. Okay, we'll do. Ms. Uh, Brown, we will, we will do that. Thank you, Mark. Ms. Brown. Uh, yes. Ms. Barnes. Yes. Ms. Faye. Yes. Ms. Britt. Yes. Calendar 21-120 is granted. It will be ratified next week and we will send you a letter. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate it. Sorry again, uh, stumbling through a couple of the answers there. I appreciate your patience. I think you did okay, Mark, so. Yep, we'll glad you stay, you, we'll, you'll stay alive. We'll see you <laughs> yeah. one, one more day. One more yeah. day. You, you, you live to quarterback very much, another everyone. game. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see everybody. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you Bye. very much. Thank you. Good luck. All right, moving on, Madam Chair. We have a case postponed from August 30th, 2021. This is calendar number 21-135 at 3040 West 14th Street. W14 Lofts LLC owner proposes to install approximately new, uh, approximately new 91 linear feet of six foot high aluminum decorative fencing in an actual front yard in a multifamily zoned district. The owner feels for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinance as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there is one. The first postponement was made at the request of the city to allow time for the appellant to meet with the development corporation and to clarify property line with city planning. And to you, Ms. Brown. Oops, I'm sorry. Brown, you're, you're muted. If you no, I'm ready. I'm waiting. Thank you. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry Ms. Brown. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, Maurice. I am swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Uh, please state, I do, your name and your address. I do, Patrick McConville, 3040 West 14. Patrick, can you, oh, I see it, thank you. Can you state your address again, I'm sorry? Yes, yeah, 3040 West 14th. Thank you. Anyone else? I do. This case? Matthew Moss, City Planning Commission. Okay. Uh, actually, well, 601 Lakeside. Okay. Everyone is sworn in, Madam Chair. Oh, I do. Donna Gregonis. No, there's someone else. I do, Donna Gregonis, Neighborhood Development Director for Tremont West Development Corporation. Uh, my address is 3308 Lorraine Avenue. We should do a blanket approval for Donna so she doesn't have to keep swearing in with each yeah. case. <laughs> well, and I, I, I feel like we should just like, I don't know, just have Donna here. She's here every Monday. I feel so bad for her. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And you always know what I'm going to say. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you. Uh, History of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been no change in the zoning since 1929. In the uh, in our office here, we found that there is one variance on file in calendar 66-264, and this was in 1964. A variance was denied to construct a parking area in the front of the two-family apartment house on the property address. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the uh, parking was to be in the uh, 40 foot front yard. This variance was again denied. And uh, then Madam Chair in the most for recent history found that in 2010, a violation notice was issued to the property uh, stating unauthorized use. 
And then um, between the years of 2014 and last year, September of last year, rental registration was issued to the property. And that's all that I have that's relevant. Thank you. Leader Sander, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting area variances from the fence requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other lander buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting of variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Okay, who's the uh, spokesperson for this project? Yeah, that would be me. Me. Patrick McConville. Okay, Patrick, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so the reason for the fence really is, um, you know, we've had a lot of issues with crime over there. Uh, having, you know, six to six plus break in since July alone. Um, you know, we also have a lot of people parking on the property who don't live there. Um, you know, we've been averaging eight toes a month uh, for cars that don't belong there. Um, and also there's in, uh, excessive dumping going on at the property as well. Garbage gets picked up on Thursday and it's full by Saturday afternoon. So um, I think that this would give our residents a sense of security, you know, something that we can't guarantee them obviously as landlords, but um, I think something that they deserve for sure. Um, and also clean up you know, unwanted people, you know, coming and going from our property as they please. Okay, and so the, uh, you had a postponement to, to um, make sure about where your property line was. So has that been settled? We do have revised drawings, yes, for the property line. Um, is that what you're asking? I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah. Madam Chair, were those drawings submitted to the Board of Zoning Appeals? Liz? I do not have any. I'm going to forward them on to Mr. Lewis. Uh, Mr. Uh, I mean, Patrick, um, who, you submitted to building and housing? Say it again for me, I'm sorry. You submitted the plans to building and housing? Uh, I believe my owner did. But if you guys are saying you don't have it, then I can definitely something I can definitely get over to you. Yeah, we need to make sure we have the most up, sure. up to date before we can write about sure. decisions. Um, Donna, once again, <laughs> hello, Donna. Hi, good morning again, Donna Grigonis with uh, the neighborhood development director for Tremont Woods Development Corporation. So. This um, has not come to the to the community, um, but we are speaking with the developer and Mr. McConville, who's here this morning. Um, I actually just received some plans this morning about the drawing about the fence, and I've talked to both the owner and Mr. McConville um, about the fact that we don't approve or don't usually love six foot fence. Um, Fencing, it's a very large fence and it sets a precedent that isn't the standard across West 14th Street. Um, and there's other things that we can do to address some of the issues that they have and we'd like to work with them and, and we will be working with them to talk about plantings and lightings or other um, defensive mechanisms to do to mitigate some of the issues that they're talking about. Uh, but we will be meeting with them on Thursday evening to discuss this. Um, so we also don't think that the fence helps with the safety issues because we've seen across both neighborhoods that a lot of times people will have a large fence and it's still the same issues that they're talking about happen. So um, we would like to talk to them in more detail and come up with a new plan. Um, but we would request that you deny this based on that. And the developers are aware that this is what I was going to talk to them you guys about this morning as well so thank you um uh, patrick uh do you, what kind of do you have any kind of uh picture of i mean i have in my mind like what this fence will look like but do you have any kind of cut sheet about what how this fence will look i do i don't have anything to give to you guys it's pretty much the standard black aluminum fence that you would see all yeah around. Um, thanks maurice that's what i thought it was this yeah summer. okay is there currently fencing on the side yards and rear yard? Or 
Yeah, so there is a uh, there's a wire fencing in the back and then on either side um, as well. Um, it doesn't stretch all the way to the front of the property line, but there is fencing currently um, along each side of the building except for facing the street. So is it chain link? Uh, chain link, correct. I believe on the south on side the of the side building. yard as well. Uh, pardon me? Is there fencing on the side yard as well? So, like the building to your left, the fencing will come up to just short of the, the front of the building. Yeah, uh, I can all the way around, all the way along the back, and um, just a little bit further of where that white car is parked on the right side of the picture. Thank you. Yep. So, you want to replace the, the chain link? Um, is it currently four feet? Um, no, so I'm not even looking to replace that. I would probably extend it down to the front of the property where we'd like to put our new security defense, uh, security defense but um, would leave or add to the existing um, fence. That's so you want to keep the chain link around the perimeter and then add this other type of fencing in the front? Correct. Yeah, no, that's 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 very strange. Um, uh, City planning. Do you have? Uh, looks like we do have Matt Moss here. Oh, I forgot. Sorry, Matt. I forgot we swore you in. Sorry about that. This is uh, Matt Moss with the City Planning Commission. Um, yeah, I definitely encourage the owner to keep speaking with Tremont West and, and the community about how uh, how they feel this fits in with West 14th. But uh, I don't. See why a four foot fence which would be code compliant along with the gate. I don't think they need a variance for a gate for the fencing itself. They could just submit a permit for four feet high of fencing and get it. It seems to me like they'd be able to get a building permit for that. So um, I think that that would be sufficient in terms of keeping vehicles off the property. Um, hopefully, with we have some construction activity going on on uh, the corner there for a new gas station. There's some property improvements being done. So hopefully that'll, uh, and, and that gas station was designed under the urban overlay to uh, encourage more walkability. So hopefully some of these changes will help uh, generate some more street traffic, which might uh, make people feel a little safer on West 14th street, uh, that plus the Topaz trail. So uh, just here to say that it seems like there's a code compliant way to for this property owner to improve this property in this way. So I would just recommend that. Yeah, uh, Patrick, are you all open to making that fencing four feet? And if you if you are, you don't have to be here. Um, well, we were looking to do something higher than four feet, obviously. Okay. Um, but if that's something that we're kind of pigeonholed to doing, um, you know, it, it may end up being the route that we have to go. Yeah, I think if you make that, you know, four feet, you can get your permit to do it, and then you can just continue working with kind of. Uh, Tremont West to try to um, circumvent some of those other problems that you're having uh, in the parking lot there. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm, I guess I have one question about the location of the gates, and I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned that they're going to be right on the backside of the sidewalk if there's going to if that's going to cause any queuing problems you know if that's going to be an automatic gate where people are going to have to come up and enter a code or put in their key card. Uh, if there's more than two vehicles, will that create a problem on West 14th Street? I guess it's just just an. Uh, I'm just curious. I was going to say, what, wouldn't that be something that built the building and housing will review if they go with new plans for four feet? I, I don't know. I don't know if there is any um, requirements for the distance from the from the street. Just it's just a concern I just wanted to raise. Oh, okay. Uh, Ms. Right, Brown so has her hand raised. Literally. Ms. Brown? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she thought that was a good question. It's a fair question. Is it a, a, a motorized gate or a um you know, just a, a gate you have to move by hand that you have in mind? Um, no, the gate would first be installed as a manual gate, but we would have a, an operator to attach to it. So you would be, you know, garage opener type to open. A oh, fobbing system. Okay. Correct. 
I just know okay, that well, West 14th think... is a very, very busy street, and you know you don't, yeah. wouldn't want to have cars queuing up in the street if there's a if there's more than one person going in. That that was the only issue I wanted to raise. You know, I really don't think that gate will ever be closed. That that the residents <laughs> are not going to be interested in that inconvenience. What do you? I'm not sure what you mean. Well, if it's automatic, they'll go through and it'll close behind them. That's why I asked if it was motorized. He said something about a prop to allow you to unlock it. Is it going to just open and close? No, it, it'll be, once finished, it'll be completely motorized. Automatic. Uh, well, that was my question. You didn't answer it that way. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, we're not going to work out your plans for you here, uh, Patrick, right. but I, okay. I feel like you have a, a good starting point here. I think if you go yeah. with the four feet, you don't have to come back to us. And then you can work with uh, Donna to, you know, work with all the other security issues that you have there. Um, and then if you find that you just really want, you know, sick, you just burn the desire to have six, you know, you can always come back. So um, I think you should just withdraw your case for now and then um, submit for the four feet fence and work with Donna with the other stuff. Does that sound like agreeable to you? Yeah. Great, thank you. So go Great. just to ask us for a withdrawal so it can be on the record. Can I get a withdrawal for this? Without objection board? Without objection. Okay. Well, thank you, Patrick. Hopefully you don't have to come back to see us, but if you thank do, we'll welcome you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Have a good one. Alrighty. Okay. That concludes our cases for today since 21-143 was postponed. So we're on to old business. Great. Old business two through seven without objection board. Without objection. Without objection. Great job, Madam Chair. Thank you. And Madam Chair, I do have a, um, this is Liz, I do have a, an upcoming case that they've asked me, and this came in um, later on Friday after I completed the yield business. Um, Dove Avenue, and this one is on the date of October 25th, so we'll have time to send out new notices. The applicant has determined that he would not be ready to go forward on the 25th and is asking to be bumped into November. We can give them the November 15th date. That's already right with you. And again, this gives us time to get it out to the neighbors so they so they will know not to come down on the 25th. But yes. I think he's and working, not... he's working with the community uh, um, you know, to get the block club and everything. And okay, and, and that's and we don't have a lot of cases yet on that date, right? Right, right. Oh, oh and again, this is calendar number uh 21-098. And we will also post that in the city record. All right, that's fine with me. What was the date in November again? Uh, November 15th. Thank you. All right, well, good job, uh, Member Brown. Swear again today. Yes, thank <laughs> you, you so much. I knew you could do it. We can